instances, this is what any company does. They purchase and they sell. If it is a goods, if it is a service, again, uh, they don't typically purchase from outside. They build out of internally and then deliver it. So I spend $100 on my purchase and I sell it for $150. So how much profit I made on this transaction? $50, right? So this is called in accounting terminology, gross profit. Now, is the $50 is my entire profit? So I will be spending certain expenses. Could be example sake, I'll keep 20. And this is my actual profit after removing all those things. So which is $30. In accounting terms, it's called net profit. Now, I talked about one transaction. Now, think about companies like Amazon, where they do half a million transactions in a day. Think about any big organizations. It's not that easy to say, hey, I made a $30 profit on my sale today because they don't do one transaction a day to keep in mind. They do millions of transactions and it's very hard to keep in mind. Now, also, there are certain aspects. Now, see, these are all very generic. And if I am talking about science, you have to visualize and understand my explanation. Whereas with respect to commerce or a business, it is in our day-to-day -day lives. So I just need to get some structure to your thoughts so that you will understand what accounting is all about. So now I introduce the terms gross profit and net profit. And the way I present these transactions follows certain rules. So that governs the accounting entries. So in typical accounting life cycle, from where it starts, there should be a business transaction, which is of financial in nature. This is a financial transaction because it involves money into it. This is my step one. Then I record this in my day book. Every day, what all the transactions I did, I record. This is also called a journal book where I record my business transactions. And every business transaction, which is of financial in nature, will goes with an accounting entry. Then once the accounting entry is done, I'll be preparing ledger posting. I'll do some activity where I post all these accounting entries so that I'll get balances, how much purchases I made in a day or in a period, how much sales I made in a day, what is my marketing expenses. All those things will be answered through ledger postings. Once all my ledger postings are done, I'll start with my trial balance. The final stage, or I can say, even this itself, we can consider it as a final stage, financial reporting. This is where I prepare financial statements. We talk about trial balance, and I talk about uh, profit and loss account, and uh, there is a balance sheet, and there is a cash flow statement. So ultimately, the whole objective of doing this is to get to know from management point of view, how much money I made, what's my financial position, what's my cash or liquidity position. These are the things that answers these questions. By preparing a PNL account, uh, this terminology might be very familiar to you. Somebody says p and account. So this is where I do this job. So where I actually calculate what is the profit I made for a particular period. For that, the prerequisite is a trial balance. Trial balance is nothing but it will give a summarized or a closing balances of, it says in this period, you made a total profits of $10,000. You made a total sales of 25000 And, uh, these are all your expenses like this. This trial balance goes with this list. And using this, you will prepare a profit and loss account. And finally, you derive it with this simple logic. So at uh, again, above the line, below the line, some accounting terminology they use. Above the line is nothing but anything you talk about before gross profit. That is called above the line items. Below the line items means anything you talk on the net profit set after gross profit. So that's called below the line items. So in simple, the profit and loss account helps you
to derive this value. So basically, after preparing my profit and loss account, I'll get this value over here. This is a profit I made. And with respect to balance sheet, basically it talks about what are my assets and liabilities. Cash flow statement basically talks about what is my opening balance of cash for that period, and what are my receipts, what are my payments comes to my closing balance. So that helps the organization know how much funds I left with to better manage my liquidity position. So in simple terms, this is how the cycle goes. Again, I brought the whole picture of why uh, we are doing all these things. Now, since it is one simple transaction, you'll be able to remember and recollect. If somebody asks, I can say, hey, $30 is what I made. But visualize an organization with the millions of transactions, how somebody can say. So there is a process that needs to be followed. And again, the whole intention of the company, you started saying that it's a profit. Ultimately, I need to know how much profit I made. So that can be uh, published or reported through my financial statements. So th these all together called financial statements. Whenever you heard a word financial statements, they are referring to this and each financial statement does a particular job. Trial balance basically reports the list of the GL codes or accounts I have and what is the closing balance of that account uh, for that period. So for every month, this is how the uh, account flows moves, right? Like example, if I take purchases, now we are in the August month. So I have uh, purchases, uh, I haven't made anything. Let's say example, uh, basically for expenses, uh, as long as they are falling in the same period, it will have some opening balance as well. So last month I made this much of purchase plus this month I made uh, additional purchase. Okay, finally, this is how the total purchases I made, something like this. So for every account opening, a period net, the debit and credits, and finally comes the closing balance. So the trial balance gives that list of all the GL codes you have in your system. Using that, I'll prepare my P&L account, uh, which gives uh, to figure out what is the profit I made and balance sheet where I basically report all my assets and liabilities like buildings, cash, uh, short-term loans, long-term loans, capital, whatever it is. And, and also the cash flow statement basically it gives my cash flow fund movement uh, in the period now. So the whole reason why I brought the picture, so now you understand where we are heading. So we know a business transaction, it's a self-explanatory, any transaction which is of financial in nature, financial interest in nature is called a business transaction. Now, how to write an accounting, how to translate this to an accounting entry. I will take an example of our procure to pay so that you will understand uh, how this accounting entries comes into picture. So we, we said, in procure to pay case, again, I'm keeping the process simple. I started with an internal requisition. Then I create a purchase order. Then the next step was I receipt goods. Then I create an invoice. Finally, I make payment. These are my stages. Is, is, is a requisition, is a financial invoice transaction? And... It's an internal document. You're not committing to anybody. You're not actually spending anything. So it can't be classified as a financial transaction. If somebody asks you why there is no accounting entry for a requisition, because it is not falling in the definition of financial transaction. Going to the next step, create purchase order. Is it again financial transaction? Yes, it also have the same definition because I'm just creating an internal document that says that, hey, these are all the items I want. Receipt of good is a financial transaction or not? You are receiving some value there is a hmm. financial element into it. So that is why it is a financial transaction. Now, what about invoice? The moment it touches this, it goes on because you received a material of $1,000. There is a value into it and there is a liability of payment. So of course, and finally funds are moving out of the bank. There is a financial transaction. Now, once the any business transaction satisfies these conditions, now the next step comes how to all these things have an accounting entry, okay? So this will not have an accounting entry since it is not a financial transaction and these three will have an accounting entries. Now, coming to accounting side, I'm going to the next stage. In the entire accounting world, there are only three types of accounts. We call it as personal, real, nominal. These are pure accounting terminology. So definitely you need to follow my conversation to understand. You talk about any account, it should fall in these three categories. Personal account, real account, 
nominal account okay so what i mean a personal account anybody involving persons right if the transaction involve a person example supplier or a customer or a lender all these falls under personal account real account means all assets or liabilities any anything which is of asset in nature comes under real account category example land and buildings your cash or uh, or your machinery all this comes under real account nature nominal account your expenses your incomes losses gains the difference between expenses or losses are same because anyway in both the cases you are losing out money we bring one more perspective or one more definition to it expenses are needed intended to make profits whereas losses nobody wants losses these are unintended but it happens right so this is the fundamental definition but many times people get confused when i use the expense or loss similarly income and gains whether income and gains are same or no incomes yeah. are generated with your day to day operations well, and these are intended we run business to make incomes we never run business to make gain what does that mean i made a purchase of 1000 dollars in our example and i sell it for 1200 dollars and i made a profit or income or revenue whatever you call is 200 dollars i am intended to do this activity of course i have a positive cash benefit of 200 dollars but still i call it as an income now i have an asset with me uh, which is of 1000 dollars and uh, i sold that asset for 1100 dollars here also i made some positive cash of 100 dollars okay this is called gain gain because my business is, i'm not running my business to sold off my assets when i say asset example there is a land a company holds for some reason they need funds they sold off this asset so then they made a positive cash inflow of 100 dollars so these are called gains whereas this is called incomes now you understand all the accounts are or will fall under this category how it will fall i will take an example now we understand these are the three types of accounts but still uh, you might not be able to fully get it but how it makes sense i'll help you with an example so understand these are the three types of accounts and there are a golden rules of accounting we know personal we know real nominal these are the only three accounts uh, one can classify a particular one right so for personal account the golden rule you need to follow debit the receiver credit the giver okay debit what comes in credit what goes out then nominal debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains these are the rules one need to follow provided if that account falls in this category now once i know the rule now i will take an example uh okay telephone bill paid 500 okay is this a business transaction or not first thing it is a business transaction there is no doubt about it debt is this a financial transaction or not so when it is a financial transaction does this requires an entry or not until here all the parameters it satisfied now for this uh, okay this is a transaction i paid 500 dollars through cash okay the accounting entry for this is debit my telephone expenses it's an expense right? then need to do a credit of my cash so basically in a journal book in a typical accounting book how it will be written telephone 
expenses account debit there is a debit column there is a credit column i will write 500 dollars in the debit side and i'll take some space into it there's a formatting we need to follow to my cash account i'll write 500 here now is this looks familiar to you this structure this is how the accounting entries usually you see in oracle mm -hmm. right so to get to this stage now we will use these rules this is the outcome i want and this is the transaction we have and these are the rules i will be using now to write this accounting entry now let's go back here we know how this entry should come like this is what we need right this is an expected outcome i know the input telephone bill paid 500 dollars through cash so usually the what is the knowledge you need to be an accountant you need to get always for any transaction there will be a minimum of two aspects one is uh, receiving aspect another one is giving aspect so we call it as uh, receiving and giving in this telephone expenses what is the receiving aspect you have you used the telephone service to be able to manage your business operations in terms of uh, to making calls or to receive calls or whatever it is right so finally for that you are spending okay here i write as telephone expenses i did and what is going out of it the cash is going out of it now let's go back to the definitions of it it is an expense if it is an expense whether is it a personal account real account nominal account so now i figured out it's a nominal account now i'm talking about cash so by seeing the above definitions uh, and also we have given examples right just understand the definitions of it real account talks about assets and liabilities cash is an asset for me that is why it is coming under real account now we know this is my nominal account this is my real account now let's go and apply these principles if it is a nominal account what the rule says debit all my expenses and losses since the first aspect in the transaction is a nominal account i figured out it is a nominal account that is why i am writing as i need to debit now i am blindly following the rule telephone expenses account short form a bar c i'll write in the end as a short form debit of 500 dollars now we know this is a real account what is the real account says if somebody comes in a real account category you need to read this rule debit what comes in credit what goes out in this case the cash is coming in or going out what is going happening out. to the cash going so out. it is going out what the real account definition says you have to Correct. now i am writing the the second line to it to cash account credit in a separate column it's just a presentation presentation wise don't worry about it it's just a standard format that you need to follow okay see when i write this entry you don't know how i write on what basis i wrote but now you know how the, that entry came so for every business transaction back of it it follows these rules using which the accounting entries will be created see inish if you are hearing it for the first time you feel very difficult to remember and apply those rules and finally come out with the output just remember your school days when you are all starting your education if somebody teaches you a two table three table you might be mugging it you might be practicing it a lot now if somebody says two five jar you will spontaneously say it's 10 right again you will not start from two one jar two 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 jar four similarly accounting entries also like that if you keep practicing it if you know the fundamentals how it works by seeing the transaction i will say this is the entry it should come i don't uh, all of this goes back of my mind finally i'll say that this is my accounting entry